Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this episode, we are going to once again attempt to launch Kerbals to the moon. Well, I mean, uh, I, maybe we should start doing it crude, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, we've got the lander in orbit around the moon and we just need to get a Kerbal over there to rendezvous with the lander. Uh, we are down to one year on the contract and uh, let's just remind ourselves uh, we'll lose four million, which is not bad. Really, our liabilities is about five million only. So what we need to do is speed up our ability to build things and roll them out. Uh, I think that's definitely the case right now. So upgrade points. Let's just pour it on. And we need to queue up a whole bunch of backups. Oh, I'll get the second rate to the same as the first, I guess. Okay, and maybe a little bit more science per day. I feel guilty about uh, not spending some on science. Let's get to 2.5 there. There we go, 2.5 science per day, down to 9.39 million. And our Hammond will be built in 29 days. Still a little bit rough. Let's get some backups queued up and then I'll, I'll launch that. Before I start time warping though, I think I need to take a look at the tech tree because we have no technologies being unlocked right now and we have plenty of science. So mature capsules, I lately have had a thing for the big Gemini concept, not really this form of the big Gemini concept, but I think that would have been an interesting sort of spacecraft. I mean, Gemini is a very nice spacecraft, lightweight, very functional. Not the one thing it doesn't have really is a docking port in front, right? I mean, it has a, the the nose cone docking for the Agena, but it doesn't really have a docking port that you can go through. Um, but otherwise, it's sort of fancy and very accessible. So maybe advanced flight control would get us a RCS technology upgrade, which is super important. We could get the LR eighty seven. Hydrolox upgrade. Oh, we could get the N1 engines. Which, um, those are pretty good. <laughs> those are pretty good. Yeah, those could be very helpful. Uh, better procedural avionics, apparently. Well, I mean, first things first, we should get some science, right? I mean, let's get some science. Lunar exploration era science, I mean, obviously. Improved communications, we might as well. Uh, these aren't that fancy, but Pioneer 10 we'll eventually want, so let's just get that first. It's only 19, and then this is only 31. So we'll try and get the Pioneer 10 antenna. That'll be important. Okay, so maybe this early life support. These all well, these are all the TAC life support containers that aren't supposed to be RP1 compatible. <laughs> Here's the some scrubbers and an air filter. Those aren't very useful the way TAC life support is configured right now. Um, yeah, let's get the NK engines. These are not so important. Improved landing engines, the Lunar Module Descent Engine Dash J. Well, it's a thought, but we're not really using that. RCS is super important. Okay, I think I'll take the avionics. Hopefully it's a clear benefit and not something complicated. The Apollo docking system is good. I don't really care about the N1 grid fins, but the Apollo docking system is good, but we only have enough for one other technology. And we have the this Apollo docking system here, and then, oddly enough, uh, the probe and drogue system over here. So that's confusing. I think I would like the Mark II pod, to be honest. It's got capacity for three and everything. Yeah, there's a lot of good pods here. I mean, there's the actual Apollo command module. Yeah, let's research this. There's a lot of parts. Okay, well, I've decided to launch a Kerbal this time. Philvy. Philvy is there. And, well, we'll hope for the best. Thought is up. SAS is on. We've lined up with the moon. 
and ignition. Launch. I did adjust the RD58 configuration so it's the right one this time. Our test flight situation is like this. So, still not maximum data units on the J2 or the RD58. Time before failure on the RD 58 is a little bit worrisome. But by that time, we have abort options as well. Well, more about abort options, I mean. Okay, we should be through max Q now. Six engines are still running. Okay, getting ready for the end of the first stage. It has looked good. Sep. And ignition. Okay, and we have a J2. Actually, we should keep some pitch there. We are underutilizing the J2 a little bit. We could probably put more fuel in. I think the tank size is just because of the tooling. But lengthwise, we could probably stretch this. Boy, is it not the rocket I wanted to build, but <laughs> anyway. Okay, we're coming up on orbit. We've got a thousand meters per second left, and the stage has been looking good. Okay, and shut down with uh, 1,262 meters per second left in the stage. 224 by 201 is our orbit. And looks like about half an orbit until we can transfer to the moon. And of course we have to rendezvous with the lander, so... We have to be very particular about our approach to the moon. Well, that's only a 4.7 degree difference to the lander, and that should be doable on the burn to make orbit around the moon. There we go. Okay, that's looking reasonably good. I mean, normally we expect about 800 to make orbit. If we add a maneuver here in 3 days and 11 hours, good timing. And we bring it down. Um, we'll call that a decent rendezvous level. Um, and then flatten it out. That second burn, well, let's see here. It's still about 800-ish. So it's not, uh, the extra four degrees is not going to change much. So let's just make sure that we get this in the first place. All right, so 59 minutes. We're still on internal power. We're not extending the solar panels because they're in the fairing right now. There's been serious boil off on the stage, but still okay. Still very okay. All right, so probably we'll only need maybe a minute to do the burn ahead of the node and then We'll have to finish it off. That'll take a little bit longer because we won't have the J2, but I'll budget two minutes just in case the J2 doesn't relight. Still a 38-ton craft here. Make sure that's all settled and ignition. Okay, the J2 ignited. Okay, and separation. Right, RCS, uh, we have not activated yet. Um, I'm taking my time because we are a little bit ahead now. Uh, 
All right, double check this. It's very stable and ignition. And the RD58 has lit. We might be a little bit late now. I took a little bit too much time there. Uh, that shouldn't be a huge problem. We're very much in line with the moon and everything. Okay, well, the sun is out and we are recharging. That's important, obviously. So, Philby's in good shape so far. We're still carrying the nose cone cap, but that's alright. I packed enough fuel so that we could try to complete the mission if there was an engine failure, but... Well, we have a lot more than we need right now. Which is good. Which is good. Nothing wrong with that. We were going to use the launcher anyway. We weren't going to downsize, so... Could have replaced these little guys with the Gemini lander engines, but doesn't make much of a difference at this point. Okay, here we go. Shut down. All right, we can do the rest with RCS. It's looking okay. Five degrees instead of four, but that's certainly all right. We don't need a mid-course plane change for that. I mean. Maybe we could, let's see, can we completely get rid of the inclination difference? I mean, just for aesthetic reasons, since delta V-wise it's not a big deal. Uh, it sort of lifts our orbit overall. Um, what would be best if, is if we have the ascending node right at periapsis. But that's a 0.7 meter per second burn right there. Well, anyway. We can proceed. Philby has enough supplies. At first blush, it doesn't look like we have a whole lot of RCS on this stage, but it's certainly more than enough. I'm almost tempted to have it hang around for the docking. After we make orbit, it'll still have 400 meters per second. But I think that might be overdoing things. We'll see. And of course, the main engine has four ignitions altogether, and we've used one. I guess we'll have to take two burns with the RD-58 anyway. One to kill the relative speed once we get right there. So, okay. So that'll be our first orbit. Okay, we've picked up communications around the moon. Right now, even if the RD-58 doesn't work, we're still okay for making orbit and returning. So, it's just a bonus. Oh, dang it, the moon should be pretty obvious by now. Oh, there, yeah, definitely right next to the sun. You can barely see it. There's the black outline. It's like a black hole right there. And the engine is stable. Ignition. Okay. We are looking good. We have captured it into orbit. Okay, we have corrected inclination and shut down there. We'll do the rest of the RCS, I hope. Yeah, I think we can easily do that. Closest approach distance coming down. Well, 18 kilometers, that's not what I wanted, but okay. Let's see what's up with that. Well, here it says 101. Okay, maybe that 18 kilometers is the wrong one anyway. Okay, now we have the good one. Excellent. Okay. All right. Let me eject the nose cap right now. Still got a reasonable amount of RCS fuel to turn for the velocity matching burn. Okay, we see our target coming up there. And one minute away. It's not going to take a minute to do this. Well, yeah, with only 200 meters per second, maybe about 
20, 30 seconds. But let's start with the turn to it. Okay. Settling the fuel down. And ignition. Okay, that'll be good enough. Let's just use RCS for the rest. Okay, actually we can move on to the two kilonewton thrusters here. Let's make sure we have the thruster blocks that we need over here. Okay, looks good. We're dumping this stage now. It has been a great stage for us. It's been a good friend, a ready helper, and all that business. Okay, and thankfully I've configured this so that it actually is a pressurized tank. You know, I was worried about that. I was worried. Did I remember to do that? I don't know. It's been a while, so... It'd be horrible to come all the way out here, and Lord knows I've done it before. <laughs> horrible to come out here and find that I didn't have a pressurized tank at that point. But we're looking good. 2,700 meters per second in here, so not too shabby. Okay, now I suppose the question is, did I rendezvous with the right thing? Uh, that doesn't seem right. Aha. Okay. It would appear so. Okay, well, we should definitely have this turn around if it has the fuel to do so. Where did I put its RCS fuel? Oh, in the tank. Yeah, I think so. Okay, that's good enough. Hold it right there. I packed a lot of fuel in this partly because maybe we were going to need to adjust our orbit quite a lot in order to do the rendezvous. But that did not turn out to be the case. Okay, that's looking pretty good on the closest approach distance. It's probably just a bit wrong, but... We are closing. We need to slow down a bit more. Usually I go for 0.2 meters per second. And we have a docking. All right, now RCS off. Okay, can we transfer crew? Full or internally unreachable. I hate connected living space. <laughs> Why do I have connected living space? Okay, well, um, Kvilvi, you're gonna have to EVA then. You know what, just in case I do something phenomenally stupid, I'm gonna F5 here. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't usually F5. Did it even F5? It doesn't tell me that's quick saving. Oh, board. All right. Okay, well now this has to be automated and it does have the core here and I think that's it. That's uh, the only core it needs. We'll verify that. Um, otherwise, Phil V can EVA to it and we'll just get out of here because I don't want that to be completely uncontrolled. Okay, uh, does this need to be topped off at all? Doesn't seem like it. It's got good food, water, and oxygen as well. Okay, so... Oh, maybe I needed to open the hatch? I don't know. Okay, other side. We seem to be connected and have good control. Uh, we might want to have SAS. No, no. Have SAS on. Oh, we really do need to extend these commutrons, though. Alright. And it's good. And it's going to hang out here in orbit in order to do the next rendezvous with the lander. And that's important because I don't 
want the lander to have to do the rendezvous stuff. I would rather have this handle it with its copious delta V. Okay. Now. <laughs> oh dear. This has gone unnervingly well so far. We will wait in orbit and then uh, we'll land right here, I think. Uh, or maybe maybe in this crater would be good. Yeah, we've got the full measure of supplies in here, actually. The whole nearly 14 days, so... That's something we could probably have dumped out, to be honest. We didn't need all that. Okay, well, let's add a maneuver. We're gonna pull... Uh, uh, you know what? The inclination change is just gonna make things complicated. And if we land over here, it's all bumpy. Maybe we can hit that crater. That's a tough one, though. But at least it's going to be in line with our return vessel, and I'm not going to be trying to do something silly. Uh, we're not really catching it very well. I mean, again, we do have fuel in the return vessel to handle a rendezvous, including an inclination change. That just says lowlands. It's not particular, no, so we're not gonna, it's not a special crater or anything, so we're not gonna be particular about landing there, I think. Was this a special crater? Mare Crisium. Oh, okay, why not? <laughs> if we're gonna land somewhere, we're gonna land somewhere with a name, right? We're not gonna land in the lowlands. And... As far as the stages are concerned, the landing stage has seven minutes altogether. It's not going to take too long to retroburn, so this first burn can be a lot closer. The distance in time between this, this is 42 minutes, 12 seconds. This is 46 minutes, 24, so that's four minutes. That's still probably too long. We can go like this, and then we'll definitely hit the crater and everything. That's a uh, inclination change and a half, though. Okay, I think that looks good to me. So let's go around, and we are going to do this. <laughs> oh boy. We gotta try and use two burns from the centaur stage. Oh, there's our little lunar lander aid communicating with us. That's nice. These have seven ignitions left. Still very unstable. Come on, get stable. Okay, very stable. Ignition. And that's a good ignition. And we're suborbital. We're pretty high up. This has got to be basically a sort of straight down sort of deal which has its benefits and drawbacks. I think pretty much no matter what, we're gonna land in that crater, so that's good. Oh, we lost one. Oh wait, this is a great test. We lost one of the RL-10s, and actually pointing it like this is actually nearly perfectly going through the center of mass. So yes, this can do the one engine ignition situation. That's good. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm glad we got that test th uh, that test in. That's good. Okay. And separation. Oh, I'm separating things correctly. Oh, there's no other decoupler. Separation. And Well, this is also a proper pressurized tank. That's wonderful. Wonderful. I have to have a word with myself about the thruster placement right now, though. They're doing all sorts of wiggles. Let me just SAS it. Okay, well, we should go with the suicide burn countdown at this point. Well, this is looking pretty good. But just for safety's sake, I'm gonna... Oh, I can't retract these solar panels. Okay, well, we get that idea. That's alright, even if they broke off, we'd have enough electric charge for the rendezvous. 
If they break off, though, probably yeah, I've landed in a really bad position and that's gonna cause all sorts of problems on its own. All the scans are probably already done. Well, no, wait. Auto perturbation is new. Oh, and pressure. In space near the moon, we've never done pressure before. Huh. Of course, this was meant to land on the moon without help from the centaur stage at all, so not a surprise we have a fair amount of fuel. Mm, the RCS is not what I want it to be right now. Let me try and get rid of the horizontal component first. Uh, you can see it's not turning as much as I need. Okay, that's good on the horizontal. I could just stay straight up and down. I could have Smart ASS do it, but I don't know if I trust it with the RCS right now. It might wobble. There. Finally, I have landed on the moon in a YouTube video without having the stupid capsule toppling on the side. RCS off. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. Wow. I did not actually expect us to get this far in this episode, to be honest. Uh, I expected some engine to fail. But, alright. Well, here we are. Uh, we should actually get the crew report as well. Mm, keep. Uh, take surface sample. Keep. I don't know how you take a surface sample from up there. But, okay, crew report. Okay. Um, well, we can transmit that. I mean, we have to tell them that we've landed at our Mare Christium base or whatever. And we can send over a pressure scan. Um, or a perturbation doesn't happen down here. Log temperature. Log radiation. Well, let's wait until the other stuff gets uploaded. And it looks like the ladder goes all the way to the ground. Very important, otherwise he's not getting back in. Now, I didn't really pick Phil V specifically. What happened was I decided to roll out the, the launcher and it asked me once I decided to hit launch. You know, it, it put Phil V in initially and I just went with it. So there was no deep analysis on this in this case. We've already got the EV report, I think, but let me just keep that. Okay, um, we'll take a backup sample. I don't care. All right, we can't plant a flag? Oh my god. Hold on. D does it require a plant a flag? It requires plant a flag and we don't have plant a flag. Hold on. Um. <laughs> I, I, hmm. I've failed miserably, folks. Oh my god. We've come all this way and we didn't bring a flag. By the way, that's the stupidest requirement. I'm very depressed right now. Hold on. I gotta go back to Space Center. Can't believe... This is not the first time I've done that either. Yeah, yeah, bored anyway. Okay, hold on. Back to Space Center. Okay, where's the astronaut complex? Can perform EVAs. Five million to plant a flag? Five million? I mean, I'm probably never going to have more than 20 active Kerbals anyway. Five million? I mean, that's a direct ripoff. I mean, that's just... They only gave us a four million advance to do the mission. And we need five million so that we can plot the flag? Well, what choice do I have, right? I mean, I have to do it. Um... Got some crap right there. Well, I mean, it's gonna take 60 days. There's no way we can, like, leave him there and then hope that he can plant a flag at the end of it. I'm... Well, we'll have a bit of a... Cliffhanger. Will Phil V return safely? I mean, I'm just really upset right now. 
So, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll leave it there, and I'm just going to say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.